So you can Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our February mega class. I am so excited. We've got some great recipes to share with you tonight. Super Bowl and Valentine's themed. So, uh, and then of course, as always, we've got specials going on at the end. And Champs Tina's got the backup on me so that you don't have to do that. You're going to help me in the kitchen. So, um, okay. So what we've got is recipes that are going to be, your family's going to love year round, but we really wanted to give you some themed cooking because there's a lot happening in this next week with Valentine's Day coming up and Super Bowl. So the first recipe I love, my friend Michelle gave this to me years ago and it's called halftime chili. You literally can make this chili in halftime of the Super Bowl game. Um, it cuts the uh, time of making chili like by um, way more than 75%. It's pretty cool. So we're going to do the microwave. Large round mold. We love the new Fortis large round mold. It's got more, uh, what's the word, strength and stability than our previous large round mold. Uh, so you put it in now in the microwave. You don't even need the plate below it because it's really sturdy. So we're going to start with um, raw onion, ground beef, one pound of ground beef. Ugh, sorry. And then we're going to... I'm going to show you chopping the rest of the onion. For those of you who have never seen the Eco Chop before, amazing. So I'm going to put my onions in there. I'm going to put the lid on top and then watch. Six pounds, perfectly diced onions, okay? So going in my large round mold is one pound of ground beef and one whole white onion. And then we're going to cover this with the octagonal bond mat and put it in the microwave for three minutes, okay? So while that is getting started, I'm gonna go ahead, give this a chance to put in the microwave for three minutes, okay? So then while that's going, I've got everything else prepped, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what I've been starting for my other recipe, which is cheesy jalapeno cornbread. Now, if you don't have these recipes yet, don't worry, your consultants will get them to you. I know I have not sent them to my guests yet, so we will get them to you. Do not worry. Um, you're all going to have these in your hands tonight. So just ask the consultant that invited you to get them to you, okay? So this cornbread is amazing, you guys. It's so incredible. Um, a couple tips before I actually dive into the recipe I want to share with you because we love sharing bomb tips. So this recipe calls for buttermilk. I don't keep buttermilk on hand. I can't even remember the last time I bought buttermilk because you guys can take any kind of milk, turn it into buttermilk. Super simple to do. Really cool too, because our middle son used to have a dairy allergy and I cooked everything, baked everything with coconut milk. And guess what? Can you find coconut buttermilk? No. So you make it. So you take one cup of whatever type of milk you're using, rice, soy, coconut, cow's milk, you name it, almond milk, you can use it. And then you add one teaspoon of an acid that's gonna turn it into the buttermilk. So you can use vinegar or lemon juice, you pick. I promise you, the recipe does not pick up the flavor of the lemon juice or the vinegar, don't work. But I, so I've made buttermilk already to go for my recipe, which is great. So the other thing that I started with is I already chopped up my onion and jalapeno to go in and saute in this saute pan I've got back here. And this has been going, it's about four minutes just to tender. And so that is done. But the cool thing about these two recipes is that you can make them together because they have some of the same ingredients, which is great. And then the cool thing is they're gonna be finished at the same time. So I'm not exaggerating when I say you can do this chili and cornbread with your prep time in 30 minutes or less, you guys. It's absolutely insane. So what I've got going on here, and I'm just gonna let this cool before I add it to my um, mixture for the cornbread, but this is sauteed onion and half a jalapeno, okay? Then I'm going to add to this my corn which you add one cup of corn. It's frozen corn, already thawed. You can use fresh corn, you name it, whatever. And then I'm gonna add some salt. Now, those of you who don't know about our Daily Grind Salt Grinder, this is amazing, you guys. Five different types of salt, the grinder's on the top, and you can change it out. So right now, we happen to have the basil parmesan on top. That is not the salt I wanna use for this. I wanna use the garlic paprika. So I'm gonna take that off, I take the lid, off of the garlic paprika, put it on my basil parmesan so it's stored away nicely, and then I take the grinder piece and put it on top. Now, another little bond tip to give you, whether you own this yet or you're going to be purchasing it, is on our both our Pep Rally Pepper Mill and our Daily Grind Salt Grinder, 
you can adjust the coarseness of the grind. So if you look closely, you can see there's a little white lip there and the turn it to the right, righty tighty, left and loosey, turn it to the right, it gets tighter. It's gonna be a finer grind, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put some garlic paprika salt in here. And then I heard that microwave go, so I'm gonna let Champ pull that out so I can show you what's going on with our ground beef. Now I did ground beef, we love beef over here. You can do ground turkey, um, you can do a combination of the two, you name it, whatever your family likes, um, it will work, okay? So then, here we go. he's like, my hands are made of steel, the heat doesn't bother me, but chance it bothers him a little bit more. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna lift this steam off, so you see how hot it is. You can see the steams came in the microwave, but I can touch this, I can touch this, it's not too hot. So now what I'm gonna do is take my masher to mash up and break apart that ground beef, you guys. Stir up the onion with it and get that nice and cooked, okay? It's just starting to finish cooking, so we gotta go a little bit longer, but you can see the flexibility of the mold as I move it around and how awesome this masher is. You guys saw, I just put the hunk of meat in there. I didn't break it up before I put it in there, but this masher, I'm able to break it up super easily. Okay, so then the other cool thing, you can use a spatula, but you can also just use your bond mat, scrape that extra pieces off of there and get it into the mold. There you go, okay? Now I'm gonna cover this back up and then I'm gonna let you take this again, Chance, and we're gonna go ahead and put that back in the microwave. I know it's only two more minutes. So two minutes, got it? Perfect. So he's gonna cook that and now we're gonna season up that chili and then cook it again. It might not be completely finished uh, by the time I go over to our next uh, recipe, but it's gonna be uh, before we finish for sure. So, okay, so that's gonna go pause. Sorry, I'm moving to the next one because I don't wanna delay. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead the next with this cornbread recipe. I'm doing liquid in one, dry in the other, mix it together, super easy. So I didn't crack my eggs ahead of time. I don't know about you guys, but I'm lucky enough to have a friend that has chicken so I can get my eggs nice and fresh from her. These eggs, that's why you got different colored eggs. Love these things. Okay, so this recipe calls for three eggs. Okay, and I love the mini whisk for whisking up the eggs. So they're not whisked up yet. I'm just gonna whisk those up. And then to those eggs, I'm gonna add, remember, my homemade buttermilk. So I'm gonna pour this in here and you can see it. It's the buttermilk. It made buttermilk. How cool is that? So I'm gonna go ahead. I've got this spatula right here. Get all that goodness in here. Okay, fantastic. That over there. And then I'm gonna whisk up, whisk up the eggs in the milk. Okay, so then the next thing that I'm gonna do, and just so you guys know, this sauteed was in butter, but you could also saute them in our EVOO. Totally up to you. So then I did pre-measure the dry ingredients. Made it super easy on myself um, for this reason. So I can tell you so easily you can make this recipe gluten-free. All you've got to do is instead of all-purpose flour, you use cup per cup, one cup gluten-free flour. So we've got flour, we've got cornmeal. We do have sugar in this recipe, but you needed it so yummy. So a little bit of sugar, baking powder, baking soda, okay? And then I'm going to pass this off to you, Chan. Thank you very much. Okie dokie. I don't need that anymore. Okay. So I'm stirring up the dry ingredients. I'm looking at the recipe to make sure I didn't forget something. Got it all in here. Yum, yum. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is add the liquid to the dry. Love our heat resistant spatula, not just for when I was sauteing the oven, sauteing the onions on the stove top. You can leave it in the pan. You can see the old red one if you didn't notice. I have a red one and black one. Now it comes in black. But you can also use it for folding batter. So I'm folding together the liquid in the dry to create my batter for the cornbread. And then I'm going to add this yummy goodness that I made earlier with the corn and the onion and the jalapeno. And I'm gonna add one cup of shredded cheddar cheese, okay? So delicious. Okay, so now you can see I'm adding the vegetables here. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it in here. Okay, so then that goes in there. All right, I'm just gonna keep finishing with this because then I'll move to the chili and show you that. 
And then I'll show you the end result when we come back after uh, Dana shares with you. So I'm gonna show you this mixture, super yummy. Okay, so now the recipe, we can put the entire recipe in our checkerboard mold, which I'll show you that in just a minute. But the other two molds that I really love to do this recipe in are all options on one of our February specials. So you stay until the end and I'll show you those. But these are two really fun recipes. Um, this is our twisted loaf, creates a really fun twist to it. And then this is our spiral bond. So now you could put the whole recipe in the spiral bond. I love having two because I can eat one and save one or eat one and share one. And so it's really great. This recipe also freezes really well. So with all of our flexible products, you're going to want to put them on the perforated baking sheet. The large is the best size, you guys, because look, you can put multiple molds on one. So highly recommend that. So now I'm going to pour this in. I don't spray, grease, oil, prep the pan in any way. I just fill it in there, which is great. Uh, the general rule, you guys, is two thirds full. So with the checkerboard mold, when I filled it, it was almost exactly two thirds full. You're gonna see it cooked, rose a little bit, cooked perfectly, it's amazing. So now on the recipe timing, we say 17 to 20 minutes because these two, are gonna probably, the Twisted Loaf will probably be 17, and the Spiral Bomb half full is gonna be 17, but if I filled it all the way, it would be 20 minutes. So you just wanna make sure at 400 degrees, okay? So I always just like to tap this out, make sure it's level, and then I put that in the oven, 400 degrees, chance I've already got the oven for you, if you don't mind putting that in. And then I'm gonna show you the end result, this gorgeous cornbread, and then I'll finish the chili. So here's the cornbread that I made earlier. And just like any other mold that we have, you're gonna take the platter you're gonna serve it on, put it on top, pick the whole thing up and flip it over. And then drum roll, please. You're gonna let this release. And voila, there is my dirty pan. And there is my gorgeous jalapeno cheesy cornbread. And I'm gonna tell you guys, the gluten-free version looks just as good. So isn't this really great how you can then take this and you can get the perfect portion cut to serve with your chili that we're also making. You can do cakes with this, you can do meatloaf with this, you name it. Uh, Jane and I were talking the other day about doing like a French toast, a baked French toast, lots of great options with that checkerboard mold. So now let's go ahead and finish up the chili. Can you grab me the chili, the meat please? Okay, so the cool thing about the flexible molds, you guys, is the fact that you can bend them, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this beef. Thank you, got it. So it's hot, you gotta be careful with the steam. Thumbs off, you can get a little facial if you want. But that meat is completely cooked. How amazing is that? So now, depending on how lean your meat is, you might have some extra juice in here that you want to get off. Mine is actually pretty lean, so I don't have much but I'm still gonna show you what I would do. The benefit to the flexible mold is guess that bend it and then let the extra drain off that you don't want in there. Isn't that cool, you guys? So now this, I just wanted a little bit, but just imagine if this was like cooked spinach, frozen spinach, edge frosted, I can squeeze it out. Zucchini, I love putting zucchini in here. Squeeze all the excess um, liquid off of there if I'm gonna put it into a casserole or something and I don't want that there. Okay, so now it's time to make our chili. So the recipe says that you can use undrained beans. I'm gonna tell you it's personal preference. Personally, I like to rinse and drain my beans. So I did. The recipe also calls for one can of beans but I'm doing extra beans, great way to stretch the recipe, make it last a little bit longer. We're gonna freeze it, which I love to do. Uh, I also like the variety of beans and because I'm draining them, there's a little less volume. So draining, rinsing them. I've got some white beans here and some kidney beans. Here's another bond tip for you guys is I always buy the low sodium or no salt added beans and tomatoes because I like to flavor with our salt. And those of you who don't know, all of our salts are sea salts. So much healthier for you than the sodium that you're gonna get in canned food, okay? So then we're gonna add one can, and I do not drain this, but one can of diced tomatoes, like I said, no salt added, because I'm gonna get enough of that in my flavoring, okay? So you can just see all of this in one. Oh my gosh, this smells so good, you guys. Okay, so then for our seasoning, this is fun. 
one to two teaspoons of cumin. I love cumin, so I went with two. You can pick what you want to do. And then chili powder, one to two tablespoons. I kind of split the difference on the chili powder and do one and a half of your chili powder. And then this is really fun. Cindy and Chai, our CEO, an amazing leader in Von Cook. Um, we have all been missing our zesty Mediterranean herb blend. It's been out of stock for a little while. And she informed me this weekend, look at the ingredients, Teresa. The meat herb blend is actually almost identical to the zesty med. So if you're a zesty med fan out there, you've got to start using the meat herb blend. And so it's gonna add some really amazing layers of flavor. We say one tablespoon of this meat herb blend. Um, I'm just gonna do one and a half because I love it. So we love that flavor here. Okay, so then just like I said with the salt mill, I'm gonna add the, to this my garlic paprika. I never would have thought how much I would use this salt, but Chance is behind the scenes. You should peek him, just let him say hi. Because you're the world's best husband helping me. And he actually is the one that um, turned me on to the garlic paprika. He was going through it so fast with his grilling. And then I was like, oh, that's really good. And so then I started using it more. It's kind of funny. So anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and stir this up. And then the one other thing I want to add to this before I put this back in to cook is I'm going to add to it some freshly minced garlic which we do in our mini herb chopper. I wanna show this because I've had many people buy this after I've demoed it for them at my house or virtually, and they can't get it to work. Not because when the guard is in there, it won't move, it won't do anything, okay? So what I like to do is show you. It has a safety guard on it, you guys. You've gotta take the safety guard off. As simple as it sounds, you're gonna probably forget when you go to use it. Then you put the blade in there because it's really sharp. I wanna show you what this mini herb chopper can do to garlic. Okay, so you can see there's the whole garlic. I'm gonna put the lid on here and I'm gonna twist. You can either twist it, the gray rubber piece, and the top like this, or you can roll it on your counter to get that garlic nice and chopped. So three garlic cloves, pretty quick and easy, but if you fill this thing, you could even do six to eight garlic cloves in there, minces it up freshly right away, and wow, that's a nice little pop of flavor. And then, I didn't show this with the Eco Chop, but this mini spatula is the best for Eco Chop and the mini herb chopper for really getting in there and getting all that yummy flavor out. Okay, so then this is when I'm gonna stir all this back up and we're gonna put this in the microwave to cook for eight to 10 minutes. It's really just combining the flavors and warming things up, okay? Because the meat is already cooked and you just wanna incorporate them all. And so this is a thicker chili. I love the thicker chili. You can easily add more tomatoes to it if you want to thin it out. And like I said, you could leave the juice from the beans in there as well. It's all personal preference. But I like the thicker chili. So we're going to go about it this way. I am going to hold this up so you guys can see this. And then I'm going to pass it off to Dana. has got another recipe to share with you that's going to go perfectly with this chili as well. And I'm going to put this in the microwave to finish cooking for my family later. So Dana, are you ready to take it away? I'm ready. Hey, everyone. Oh, my gosh, that I was just mesmerized watching all the bond tips and ideas and tricks. So thank you so much for those recipes. Um, I've done the microwave, you know, chili before, but it's been a while. So I forgot how easy that really is. So anyhow, I digress as usual. So I want to give you a little background about where this bonus recipe came from. So it was the end of last month. And I just got this little bug in my ear that I wanted to utilize our log mold for something more than just a Yule log at Christmas. And I absolutely love, when I was in high school, like I'd get to the finals, I'd get my finals done and I'd be like, yes, now I can bake bread. So I always love to bake wheat, honey wheat bread for my family. And I thought I'm gonna create a recipe that will make a honey wheat loaf in this log mold. It's an 11 inches long by four by four. So it's really a family size loaf that it makes. So I reached out to home office and I'm like, I perfected this recipe and I really want you to make this a monthly special. And it would be the log mold and your flexible scraper and your mini whisk. There's a few other things you need, but those three pieces would be great. They're like, we already have the monthly special set, but how about a flash sale? So here we are, fast forward to the first weekend of this month, and we have this awesome bread kit, oh honey, bread kit. So I'm gonna 
bread making is like a whole class in and of itself. So if you want to take a deep dive into bread making, there's a lot of us consultants that are going to be teaching a bread class later in the month. You can reach out to the consultant who invited you. Um, if they're not teaching one, one of us leaders would happy to have you. So I'm going to try and like condense this down into just a couple minutes and give you all the steps. So let's start by mixing up our ingredients. Now, I like to use a glass um, bowl when I'm rising bread because I like to be able to peek and see how much is risen. So I like these Pyrex glass bowls. They have a lid, which is great for proofing as well. So you want to measure when you're baking bread, you want to measure your flour using um, a kitchen scale. And you can get an inexpensive kitchen scale on Amazon. This is a William Sonoma one. I think I earned this as one of my um, incentives with Bond Cook. But you want to definitely measure your ingredients by ingredients by weight versus by volume with a cup. So I've already pre-measured one and a half cups or 192 grams of all-purpose flour. You can also use bread flour here. And then I have uh, the same amount, 192 grams of wheat flour. Now, um, another bond tip is I absolutely love King Arthur flours, or if you're in the Pacific Northwest, Bob's Red Mill. Specialty flours, I keep in a Ziploc bag and I keep them in the freezer to keep them fresh. All-purpose flour is in my canister because I'm in and out of it all the time. But I like to do my specialty flowers in the freezer because they stay really fresh. Oh, there's my timer. We get so excited. Okay, so we've got half and half. One and a half cups, one and a half cups. The next thing you add is a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt. We're going to use kosher here. You also want a teaspoon and a half of instant yeast. So I also love to get my yeast um, through King Arthur flour as well. This is the Saf instant. You want instant yeast. So if you go to your store and you're looking for the Fleischmann's or the Red Star, choose the instant, okay? Because you don't need to bloom it. This bread, you don't need it. You need it, but you don't need, you know? Um, so a teaspoon and a half, right in. And for, um, for the, what is this called? Yeast and the salt, I don't weigh that. It's such a small, you know, amount that you really don't need to do that. The flour and the water, I do weigh. Okay, so there's that. So you've got your salt, you've got your yeast, and your flour. Oh, I'm going to and whisk, and I hear somebody right. talking. Um, you're going to use your mini whisk. It's part of your collection that you're going to order by 11.59 p.m. tonight. So I'm using that mini whisk mm -hmm. to cook the ingredients. Then I've already measured my water. It's to, uh, 340 grams, and I like to use um, a Pyrex measuring cup for this, a glass one. Now, when you're looking for your um, kitchen scale, one thing I didn't mention is you want to make sure it has a tear, T-A-R-E. So what that means is when you put the glass measuring cup on there, you can zero it back out again and just measure the ingredients. So it keeps beeping at me because it wants me to do what I want to do. So now you wanna make sure your water is between 110 and 115 degrees. So I have my trusty Bond Cook thermometer. In my microwave, it's like one minute. So I'm gonna put it in. Don't peek at what's already in here, okay? I'm gonna put it over here so you can't peek. And I'm gonna do this for one minute. Okay, I've got my thermometer ready to measure. Then here's where the honey comes in. I absolutely love Manuka honey. You can get it. I, this is the one I got at Costco. It's kind of expensive. A little goes a long way, but it is on the thicker side. So you need to melt it a little bit to incorporate it with the water. You can also get Manuka honey at Trader Joe's and specialty stores. And then the last thing, last ingredient is some of our French pantry EVOO. Now, I'm sure you're looking at this and going, where did she get that bottle? You can get that bottle in this kit. It's the dinner time gift set. It comes with the chicken, the meat, a salt grinder, and a tiny bottle of the EVOO. I love to keep this on my counter because I'm always using it, but I don't want that huge, gorgeous bottle on my counter because you want to store your um, olive oil for best practices in a cool, dark place. So I love to just keep refilling this and you will want a teaspoon and a half of this as well. So let me grab our water. 
It's usually just perfect, but I'm going to measure it because it needs to be at least 110 to activate the yeast. And if it's over 115, you will kill your yeast. So don't do that. Okay, so we're right at 110, 111, 112. And I like to kind of stir it around because there might be a hot spot or a cold spot. Perfect, 114. I'm gonna take that um, honey and I already microwaved that. So I'm putting it right in. Oh, that's all blended. Oops, um, that's not a problem. It's just gonna give a little more flavor. I'm gonna take one of our jar spoons and I'm gonna put the honey right in with the water. I'm gonna use that mini whisk again and my scale's looking at me, so I'm gonna move him over. So you definitely want to get all that honey flavor in there. Now you can do this recipe with all um, all purpose flour to make a white honey white loaf. And then I also am working on almost perfected um, a garlic herb Asiago loaf, which I will show you in a minute, which is to die for. Okay, so then you're gonna take that same mini whisk. Ta-da. I always like to kind of check it again to make sure it hasn't gotten too cold. And we're good. Right in it goes to the bowl. This is easy, right? Just mix it up ingredients. Um, I like to use my heat resistant spatula here and you're not gonna need this. You're just gonna stir it until there are no dry spots. Just a couple minutes and I'll hold it up to show you. You want a shaggy, kind of a rough shaggy ball and then you're gonna let it rise for two hours. Now my suggestion is find a place in your house that's draft free, that stays warm. And for me, that's my microwave. So what I do is I um, put it in the microwave and I'll show you that in a minute and then set the timer for like 90, 90 minutes. Sometimes depending on, you know, are you baking bread in the summer? Are you baking bread in the winter? Do you have, today I had guys with my window was taken off. And so, you know, you never know when you're gonna have lots of excitement at your house. So it can stay safe inside your microwave. Now you can see, in just a couple minutes, that is a perfect rough ball, right? So you just wanna make sure you kind of pull everything down from the sides and there's no dry spots. You form it into a nice ball, just like so. Then here's where it gets fun. You can either use the lid if you're using a glass bowl, easy peasy, in which case you don't wanna push it all the way down. You wanna kind of leave it loose or you can cover it with one of our bond mats. Now you saw Teresa use the octagonal bond mat as lid. I'm gonna use our square bond mat as a lid. If you have a bowl that's bigger than that octagonal, you can absolutely use that square bond mat. Love it, love it, love it. But I like to use my lid, kind of a jar, and then my favorite, Baby Yoda, kitchen towel. So Baby Yoda's going in to the microwave. I set it for 90 minutes and I check it because it might be ready. Otherwise, you want it to go for two hours. So in it goes. And then voila, it's been legit. Baby Yoda too. This is what it looks like when it's been in the microwave for two hours. The thing that I love to use, the reason I love to use a glass um, bowl is because look, you can tell it's risen beautifully. You can peek in there without opening your microwave. Sometimes I get in there with my flashlight. So this is what your beautiful dough looks like. Oh my gosh, smells so good. So here's where you take your flexible scraper and you're gonna just bring it up from the sides. It's a very forgiving dough. It's not like you have to treat it with kid gloves, but you wanna kind of put it into a little bit smoother ball, just like that. Then you take your olive oil, which I thought was honey a minute ago, and I might need a little more because of it. You're gonna put your olive oil on the top, and then you're gonna kind of scoop it around. Yeah, I need just a titch more because I put some into the other dough. Just a titch. Then you bring your log mold over. <laughs> to do the second rise in the mold. So what I do is I kind of, as I'm working it around the bowl, I kind of form it into a little bit of a log shape. And then I'm just gonna pour it right in. You can see there's a little layer of olive oil and I want that. I don't, you don't need to incorporate it into the dough. I wanna make sure you can see. So you just roll that guy right in, just like so. Voila, look at your bowl with that flexible scraper. It's all incorporated. Now here's the fun part. 
because it's this amazing flexible bakeware that's made of 100% platinum grade silicone, I can get in there with my scraper and tuck it in and almost roll it around so that seam is now on the bottom. If you were in a glass or metal pan, you would never be able to do that. So I just kind of go like that. I kind of want to make sure it stretches out to reach the end of the mold on both sides, just like so. And then if you have like a seam that it's not perfect, you can just kind of pull a little bit of the dough over from the other side like that. You can just kind of play with it. Um, you don't want to overwork it, but you just want it kind of however it ends up now is going to be how it ends up when you bake it. So that I'm happy with. At this point, if you wanted to put some everything bagel seasoning on it, if you wanted to take that the beautiful salts that Teresa was talking about, put some salt on top, but I'm just going to leave it just like so. Now, because of this new Fortis product has a lot more structure, I can put it in, I'm going to put it back in the microwave to rise. I can put it right back in like this. I don't need it to be on that perforated ba baking sheet for stability, but there you go. How gorgeous is that? And there's somebody already in my microwave, as you know. Can I put it on the top? I think I'll just let it be over here. My, my room is warm. So in that goes to the microwave. And I set it for <clears throat> At this point, I preheat my oven because I'm going to bake it right away. To 375. Bake. Start. So that's going to bake at 375. Okay. So pretend like it's been rising for 30 minutes and it's beautiful. You want to see it crowning the top of that mold, which means you can see it up over the mold. And you've preheated your oven. And at that point, once you go to bake it, you will want to put that mold on your perforated baking sheet. Gets it safely in and out of the oven. The perforation allows for even browning and air circulation, yada, yada. You've heard all this before. But fast forward, after baking for 45 minutes at 375, this is what you get. Look at that gorgeous whole wheat loaf. Is that not stunning? Oh my gosh. And then what you do is to remove it from the mold. Now with Fortis, Teresa and I have talk, been talking about this a lot. Um, let it cool for 10 minutes and then unmold it to let it cool the rest of the way. And that's pretty much for all your baked goods, but check it out. Voila, that is your quote unquote dirty pan. I could absolutely bake in it again. I was so excited with my second loaf mold uh, log mold came today, but look at that beautiful bread. It's got a really nice texture. It's beautiful for making sandwiches. We're talking about, you know, football here. You could serve this with the chili. Um, for Valentine's Day, you could wrap it up in a tea towel. Of course, I would love if someone gave me a gift with a baby Yoda tea towel. In fact, that's where those came from. Wrap it up with a bow. Such a gorgeous loaf. Now, not just for Wheat, honey wheat. Like I said, you can do white. So you do, you'd measure out that first set of flour and just do all white flour. Um, you can do this beautiful, and like I said, I'm just perfecting this recipe. We'll get it up on the website as soon as possible. But this was a loaf that I did where I added some of our roasted garlic and chive. If you've not seen our herb blends, I did a table, I added a tablespoon of roasted garlic and chive. I added some Asiago cheese. And then when it came out, I brushed it with butter, some more of the herbs, and some garlic powder. But look at how beautiful that is. Look at that texture. They all come out with this beautiful texture, nice and soft, but not gummy. There's got that beautiful topping. And then when you get so much bread, you don't know what to do with it, you can make croutons. So this is a couple pieces that I had left over. We've been eating a lot of bread because the thing about testing bread is like you add a little this, you take out a little that, and you can't really give someone a loaf with like two pieces taken out of it, right? So I have tons in the freezer. It freezes beautifully, but you can also make croutons. I would toss again with herbs and some of the oil and some salt. You can also make breadcrumbs, get out that eco chop that Teresa showed you and make bread breadcrumbs. So, oh my gosh, I know I threw a ton at you. Um, any questions that I can answer? Like I said, we're gonna be teaching um, an, a, more of an advanced bread class. If anybody would like to um, join that, let us know. But did I miss any questions I could answer on the fly, Teresa? 
No, you got them all. Oh my gosh. Everyone is so excited to try that bread for sure. And Kathy did ask why cover the plastic lid and towel. And Sarah said, keeps bread from drying out and allows no draft. Exactly. You only want to cover. Yeah, exactly. Cover it with whatever your choice is um, so that it, yeah, keeps it from falling. Awesome. So right. enjoy. Hope you guys will try this recipe and make sure you grab this flash sale. It um ends at eleven fifty nine p.m. tonight. So grab the flash sale and get baking. Awesome! Thank you. All right, You're Lauren, welcome. you ready to take it away? Hi everyone, that looks delicious. I've been on a bread making uh kick these days, so I think I'm gonna have to try that recipe. It looks really easy and really delicious. So. I'm here to, to finish it out with a very simple, easy, rustic, rustic uh, ham pie with two ingredients that are just perfect for the Valentine spirit, you know, chocolate and raspberry. So can't go wrong with that. And um, I'm actually using a roll pat. I thought you saw Dana using it as well. Um, the special that I'm featuring actually uses the, um, the square one, but I have the rectangular one. But what's great about the roll pad is not that it's perfect for rolling out dough, um, but it's also one of my favorite things that we carry because um, it works as a great workstation because it sticks to your counter. So what you're going to need, I've got my oven at 375. Hopefully this isn't too warm. I've got just regular old um, Pillsbury pie crust. Um, if you want to make your own, you can, of course, but if you don't want to, just go ahead and get Pillsbury. Now, what you want to do is the box comes with two. So I'm going to just do half because I used the other one for some ones that I made earlier, but um, you'll use one disc to roll out 10 and then the other disc to roll out 10 and I'll show you. So this is our Beechwood rolling pin and I'm just going to give it a little roll um, from the inside out. Does it need to really be rolled out too much? Um, but just a little bit. And I'm probably just going to do about five to show you. Um, because again, I made some before. Of course, my husband's already <laughs> taken, I think, one, maybe two. Um, but OK, so uh, I have my dough um, rolled out. And I have next to me already, you want to make sure that you have this ready. I've got my perforated baking sheet and my large um, bon mat. Um, this is part of the um, special that I am featuring. I think it's called Made with Love. So if you don't have a perforated baking sheet, you want to make sure you get one because, of course, like Dana said, that's what helps everything uh, cook evenly and make everything beautiful. These are our beautiful fluted heart um, cutters. And you can see there's several in here. So this particular recipe calls for... The second to last one, I always get confused as to how to get them out of here. It really, it really makes a difference. They either go in one way or out the other way. So I'm using the second largest one. And all you're going to do is just, as you can see, just go ahead and press it down. Um, this is safe to use on our roll pad. So I'm just going to press down. See how many I have? One, two, three, four. Uh, we'll go this way. Five. Six, let's do seven. I'm going to do eight, but you would normally want to do 10. But what you want to do is you'll see that this so beautifully just picks up and just everything just pulls away beautifully. Now, you may have always been taught to like gather these and make a ball, but you don't want to do that because these are really good scraps that you can roll out again, but you don't want to toughen up the dough by rolling it into a ball. So what I like to do is just kind of separate it, put it all into a nice little neat pile and roll it out. And what's good about this too is we've got so many of these little heart shapes that you can roll out some of the dough and make some cute little like decorative pieces. So I have my pieces here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put them onto my bond mat, right? And what, again, what Dana had mentioned to you, what's wonderful about our products is you don't have to spray, grease, oil, flour. Um, everything comes out beautifully. So I'm just going to put these on here. They don't really spread, so we're safe there. Um, one, two, three. I'm going to take this off. Okay, so I've got four and four. And again, you would normally do 10 and 10, um, but I'm just showing you the four and the four. All right, 
Let me just make some room here. So now what I wanna do is also in this little packet, there is the smallest little one. Again, these are so cute. I wanna use the little tiny one. On this group, I'm gonna punch out a little heart so that, um, and you can save it because you can actually decorate the hand pie with it. So I'm just gonna pop that out. Now the first batch I made, I mean, the recipe calls for raspberry and chocolate, but my husband's like, can you make a couple of blueberry? <laughs> so I did blueberry, not blueberry and chocolate, but blueberry. So that's what I have done and I can show you, but then I'll make sure that I get some pictures up of these. So you can see how cute is that with that little imprint. So now um, I'm going to take some chocolate in our mini round, which is kind of from the Days gone by, but um, I'm gonna pop it into the microwave for about 30 seconds to so just hang tight. We have some other rounds that you can use as well. Um, I just grabbed that little mini. So um, to this, what I wanna do is I've got an egg wash. I'm using our um, pastry brush and I'm just going to um, put a little bit onto the ones that are already on the bond mat. And for my compote, so to speak, my filling, now in addition to the chocolate, I have some beautiful fresh raspberries that I put into a saucepan and I added some sugar and some vanilla bean paste. You can use um, vanilla extract if you want, but it's nice and rich. I let that cool down, so delicious. All right, I'm just gonna give this a quick stir with my mini whisk and it needs to go a little bit longer so hold on and you like to do these in like 30 second increments because you don't want the chocolate to burn um what else i wanted to tell you about this okay so i have these out here so i think what i'll do is while that chocolate is going so i have a, a nice little piece here that i don't have to roll out too much more I'm gonna take this other little piece here, this cute little heart shape, and I'm just gonna cut out a few so I can decorate my pies. And again, you can use different flavors. You just wanna make sure they have a nice little compote. One second. We're getting there. While this is still going, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you <laughs> the other ones that were done. Um, just for the sake of time, I'll show you that these that are done. Now, I made again these with blueberry, but the ones I'm making now with raspberry. Aren't they cute? They're beautiful. They're rustic. They've got like own little pie and you can, I like to dust everything with powdered sugar. So let me just see. I want to make sure that this is, this chocolate is melting. So hold on one second. It's kind of coming together. And if I can't get it together real fast, oh yeah, it's coming together. So it's not beautifully melted, but it's enough that I can show you. You know, let me go one more second. So I'll just talk about some more things here. You know, Lauren, I've been finding uh, the new loaf mold, the classic loaf mold has been awesome for melting chocolate. So oh, great. I'm excited That's about that because I've been trying to find, since we can't get the mini round mold anymore, I've been trying to figure out what can we use? And I've used my loaf mold quite a bit. It's been a good one. That's a great me. idea. Very good idea. Thank you for that tip. Um, you know, sometimes people ask me, well, what else am I going to use these for, you know, these uh, cutters for? But, you know, you can use it to um, make some beautiful charcuterie boards, cut your fruit, cut your cheeses, um, cut some breads. If you're making crackers, I have homemade crackers. I make rosemary uh, crackers, I like to use these too because they make it so festive and pretty. All right. Um, you can even make little fun grilled cheeses. I love to do grilled cheese and tomato soup this time of year. And it's fun to do the grilled cheese in a heart shape. Um, oh, that's a good idea. It's a little extra special. Yeah. All right. So here's my melted chocolate. So here I have on this side, I have the ones that don't have the little cutout. Just going to put a little bit of chocolate in the center. And spread it out a little bit because again i mean what goes better than chocolate chocolate than raspberries of course then you're going to want to have a glass of prosecco <laughs> <laughs> right all right so don't mind the fingers it's just me and the hubs eating so 
I've got a little bit of my chocolate there. I'm gonna spread it out a little bit. And add a little bit more to this one. Then I'm just gonna add my raspberries to it. Beautiful raspberries. Put it right there in the center. I'm gonna spread it out a little bit. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. I think this one's gonna I think this one's gonna come out better than the blueberry. Because I think that the texture of these raspberries is probably going to work a little bit better. Um, the blueberries were still pretty, um, pretty whole. So they were kind of popping out and going everywhere. But they taste good. All right. So I got my raspberries on there. Then I'm just going to take, sorry, let me get this in here. Then I'm just going to take this piece here, put it on top very carefully so that they match up and line up. All right, then I'm going to take a fork and just carefully press and crimp so that this doesn't explode too much. I mean, I think it will get maybe a little bit will come out the top, at least the dip of the blueberries. But what's great about the Von Mata is that nothing's going to stick, so you peel it right off. So you're just going to go ahead and crimp these with the fork, being very careful not to damage the, I see it's coming out a little bit. That's okay because it won't um, it won't spill. And then you're gonna put the egg wash back on the top. And you don't again don't have to really worry so much about it getting all over the bond mat because it won't stick. I promise you, nothing will stick to this. It'll come right off. All right. And then what I like to do is I'll add maybe this little heart right here on the top of that one, and then maybe over here on this one, and a little heart over here. A little heart down here, put a little more of the egg wash on. Sprinkle it with some um, raw sugar. Oh my God, this looks so good already. <laughs> and then you're gonna pop it into the oven for about, I think the instructions say 20 to 22 minutes. Mine was about 18 minutes in my oven because you know every oven is different. But they come out again looking so cute and so delicious. Beautiful rustic hand pies and you can stick some powdered sugar on them and serve them to your family and they are beautiful and they will be such a treat and a really fun way to use our heart cutters. Back to you. Oh my gosh, those look amazing, Lauren. I wish that I was there to taste them, but um, I know they taste so good. So. I know that we've gone a little bit longer with our cooking demo than we normally do. And so I am going to uh, go quickly through our specials, but I don't want you guys to miss it. And then we'll get to our raffles. So I'm pretty sure everyone has put their name in the chat box. And so if you have not, make sure you go and put your name in there so you can be in that drawing. And then I also want to make sure you guys know that if you have any intentions of Booking a class with your consultant anytime in the month of February. You're not doing the class next week. Don't worry. Book a class with your consultant, uh, joining our team or getting shopping tonight. Put book, join, shop, uh, one of those in the comments and you'll get five extra entries. So I just want to make sure you guys know about that. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen with you in talking about joining. I want to make sure that everybody sees this amazing event that we've got happening on Thursday, this Thursday, February 8th at 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, you can join Cindy Unchai, our very own CEO that we all uh, love hearing from. And she is doing a Bond Cook Look to share more about joining our amazing business and of course, our our Rockstars team. And the exciting thing that they haven't done in a really long time was is they're offering a free gift for any guests that join. So this is not for consultants, um, although we want our consultants on there too, but it is for any guests. So if you're not a consultant, you can get on this Bond Cook Look and just from getting on, you can get a free gift, which is going to be a Bond Mat. It's amazing, you guys. So just jump on. And listen, and he learn more about the mission that we're sharing here at Von Cook, and you get a free gift for doing that. So that's super exciting. I want to make sure everyone marks their calendars. Um, reach out to your consultant if you need the link to register. It's right down there, but I, it's not one you can click on on the Zoom. But I want you guys to reach out to your consultant and find the information about that and join us for Cindy's Von Cook look on Thursday, okay? So now I also want to share with you the flash sale that Dana was sharing that ends 
tonight at 11 15 not 11 59 pacific time okay so this oh honey special is awesome this was dana's little baby and coming up with this because these are the pieces um, that you need, as you just saw, to make this amazing bread and so many varieties of this bread. So for only $49, you can get the log mold, the mini west, and the flexible scraper. If you want this, go get it now. And if you're going to buy this tonight, sale ends tonight, go put in the chat box, oh, just the word shop. We'll give you your extra entries. Don't worry. Okay. So then I want to do a quick glance at our February specials. I'm not going to go into the business kit special so much because you guys can reach out to your consultant and they can tell you more about that. As you know, we love to have people join our Rockstars team. And so we really want you to consider, but we really want you to join the Bond Cookbook on Thursday because that's where you're going to hear from the most from Cindy and you're going to be wild with what she has to share. But I do want to share with you our host rewards this month is, is really generous. And so with our host rewards, not only are you going to get to make your choices and choose some things, you're going to have free shopping to do. Um, and the more that more successful that your class is, the more you have to shop with. But then we have these stackable gifts. And in the end, when you get to the Bon Elite level, you're going to be able to get all of these items that are in our meal prep collection valued over $200. And then you also have an additional $96 to shop for free, whatever you want. And you also have a 50% off item. You get one 50% off item just for doing the class. And then an additional 50% off item up to four to for booking for somebody booking a class on your class. So I want you to reach out to your consultant. Think about how awesome it was to see all these recipes tonight. And you know, your friends are going to want to experience these amazing recipes and products. And so we um, are going to reward you big time for inviting them. Now, if you are a new customer, or you have friends who are going to be new customers, they also get 20% off their entire first order with us. So that's a huge savings happening this month only. So reach out to your consultant about that, book your class, and we'll share that with all of your friends when they come to your class. And then last but not least, the specials that we shared tonight, um, we went through them. I'm just going to do a quick glance because all of you should have access to this through your consultant. But as uh, Lauren so... Uh, wonderfully showed the made with love special. You can see that the square bond mat, the large, sorry, the square roll pat, the large bond mat, and then your choice of either straight or fluted heart cutters. Great savings there. And then we've got the ooh la la special. So I was showing you guys the spiral bond, the twisted loaf and the checkerboard molds. So you get your choice of one of those three and you get a small bottle of our EVOO. So great special there and things you're going to use all the time. And then be mine, fall in love with French Pantry. You're going to get the daily grind salt mill and then your choice of available herb blend. Highly recommend the meat herb blend we just showed you as well. So um, I'm not going to waste any more time because I want to make sure to get to these raffles before um, you guys fall asleep on us. So um, Tina, are you able to join me? I am here oh, and ready. Goodness. Okay, and perfect. We've got our wheel. Are we okay, ready to so, spin? What are we giving away? No, I'm so excited. I decided that with the Super Bowl coming up, a lot of people are going to be either making nachos or they're going to be making wings. And I feel like even if somebody has one, they can always use two flexi mats. So we're going to yeah. give a flexi mat, which you guys all may think sheet pan, dinners, you name it, jelly rolls, pumpkin rolls, wings, nachos. So the first winner is going to get that's that. That's amazing. That's a $69 value. That is that amazing. Awesome? All right. Here we go. Let's see. Um, I got to spin my wheel. There we go. You guys love how we work as a team. It's the best team ever. You want to be a part of this amazing collaborative team. You got to consider joining us. All right. Teresa Lee Nemeth. Awesome. Congratulations, Teresa. Teresa. All awesome. right. Okay. Let's and then do. the next winner is going to get the large round mold because that's the other piece that I feel like you cannot have too many of. And we showed a great recipe in there yeah. tonight. So large round mold. Oh my up. gosh. That's the new Fortis large round mold is amazing, amazing with the reinforced size. Love it. Use it for everything. Yeah. So amazing. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Spin. Oops, is it spinning? Did I do it right? Spin the wheel. 
spin. Oh, I see. I got to push <laughs> two buttons. <laughs> Oh, it's the same name. We're not oh, going to do it. Yeah, we only let again. people wow. in. Wow, that's a lucky. Again. You need to go buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> All right. Ah. All right, let's do that again. Spin. We have a lot of names on there. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Lisa Sarpolos. Congratulations, Lisa. Lisa. That's awesome. Yay. All right. Yay. Okay. Way to go, Lisa. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining tonight. We were so happy to have you here and uh, we hope to see you at a class that you're going to join. You're going to book with your consultant in the month of February, um, or we're going to even sooner see you at the Bonkook Look on Thursday. Thanks everyone.